The purpose of this video tutorial will be to show how to transform an AutoCAD file into an adapt builder model using Builder 2018. And this is part of a longer tutorial that goes through the entire process of generating a model, analyzing the model, setting up support lines and design strips, and then designing the model for post-tensioning. So this is part one of that longer example. We're going to go ahead and in the splash screen of Builder, we're going to use the drop down, make sure that we have the right selections made. So in this case, we want to have Floor Pro. Edge will be more important when we uh, transform the model into a multi-story model, but we'll go ahead and keep that um, selected now. The mode um, is used to set the type of design you'll be doing. So if it's an RC slab, we want to have RC selected. If it's a PT slab where you require the need to model post-tensioning in the model, then you need to have PTRC selected. Um, modules, we'll go ahead and keep both modules deselected, and we're going to use the US system of units. We'll select OK, and this will now open the program. Now, as we use the um, new interface to transform the tools, we'll, we'll describe some of the new uh, ribbons and the layout uh, contextually as we use it and how it applies to this particular example, and that will be the case for other examples as well. So we'll go ahead and get started by selecting File, and we're going to use the option to import a DWG slash DXF file. We'll select DWG. And we want to go ahead and navigate to the location of the file. So we'll select the file. And the import um, dialog will open. We're going to import, uh, we're going to calibrate, rather, the um, drawing file that we've imported. We're not going to move it into position. This might be important if you have multiple CAD files that you want to import and you want to keep them all at a reference plane that's aligned vertically in the global Z direction. So we'll leave that as is. Also, we're going to insert um, at the current active plane, and we'll use um, this tool here to show that currently the current active plane is called current plane. So by default, we have a elevated plane, which is called current, top, and bottom. And we're going to import this into current plane. That's based on this active setting. Currently, that's the default setting. Okay, so we'll go ahead and do that. We'll name this uh, CAD import 1. I'll select OK. CAD file will be imported, and these um, grids we're going to use then to define a dimension. So we'll go ahead. This is actually in metric. We're going to convert this to um, American units and I'm going to just select some of the snap tools which are located on this lower user bar. This is actually called the status bar. We have some status settings here which dictate this, the, the name of the bar. The um, upper active user bar is at the very top. You'll notice there's some generally uh, more commonly used um, icons here like uh, open, new, save, undo, redo, print, and so on. And then at the far right, we have story manager icons or tools, which are level assignment, active level up, active level down, single level, and multiple level mode. And some of those will be covered in um, additional tutorials that um, are in line with this um, or are in the same overall tutorial as this particular segment. So let's go ahead and continue with the calibration. I'm going to turn on um, snap to intersection and this option snap to vertices of components and I'll go back I think I had disabled the calibration I'll just go here to the home menu under tools and I can just calibrate that again okay and we're gonna call this 30 feet so I'll select enter I'll enter 30 feet say OK and now, if we wanted to test that dimension, I can just use this option for creating a dimension from here to here, let's say, and that should be roughly 30 feet. OK, 
Okay, so we've, we've converted the CAD file. Now we're going to uh, use layers to isolate specific components and convert them to, um, uh, to structural components. So you can see we have uh, quite a bit of, um, let's say, a variety of different components here. We have s several walls that are kind of aligned and beams within this group. There's walls around most of these cores. We have beams. We have perimeter beams in this direction, perimeter beams here. We have a beam along here, here, and here. And then we have drop caps in this region. So we're going to find a, a nice way to transform these without having to pick and select, selecting the control button while we do that, different types of um, icons or different groups of icons. So the first thing we'll do is columns. If I double click on this column, that will open the properties of the column. And I'll go to properties and you can see this says adapt columns lower modeling. So um, we want to isolate that layer. I'll go to home. We're already on the home ribbon. Under display, I'm going to select layer settings. I'll turn all layers off. And I can use this to sort by alphabet uh, alphabetically the different layer names. Okay, and this is called again adapt columns lower modeling. Um, so I'll go ahead and turn that layer on. And we now have our columns. I'm just going to window select the columns. And under the model ribbon, we're going to use this transform palette or this transform panel rather. And we'll just use this option to transform columns. And that transforms those components to columns. I'll now go back to home. Under layer settings again, I'll turn all the layers on. Okay, so we have columns in place. Now I can easily just select the drop panels. Those are those are pretty easy to select. There are only four of them. And I'll go back to model and I'll do uh, I'll go ahead and transform drop caps and panels. If I want to see this thing as it's growing in terms of the structural components, we can always go to visibility under the render model tool. This is also located at the bottom on the status bar and you can see components that have been created. So you can see the columns and the caps that we just, just created. And those caps need to be properly sized in terms of their thickness. We'll go back and add a thickness to them here in a moment. So let's go ahead and do the perimeter uh, beams. We'll go ahead and select the beams. Now I could um, select these by Again, turning off all layers and isolating, but this is easy enough to just select these um, manually. And we could window select. You have to be careful that you don't select other components, so that's why I'm clicking on these quite carefully. Within the core, uh, I'm not going to transform those beams. I'm just going to do the main beams on the perimeter. We're going to transform walls and openings in the core and then just leave the slabs as solid. Um, just to simplify that region. So um, I have selected the beams. I'll go back to model, transform, and we'll transform beams. Okay, again, if I go to visibility, you can see I now have beams on the perimeter. And those, again, we'll need to assign a depth to the beam. Right now, the depth is based on the default. I believe it's 24 inches. If we double click on a beam, you can uh, select tab and notice if I select tab I have this red handle this X that indicates that that's the structural component I can then go down to item properties or modify item properties and this is actually 20 inches so we'll change that to let's say 24 um, we'll go ahead and isolate openings now so I'm going to determine which layer those are on if I double click on an opening Adapt Openings Modeling is a layer. So we'll go back to Home. We're going to turn all layers off. And then we'll find Adapt um, Openings. Okay, it's this one here. And these are the openings that we're going to um, transform. And you can see there's, there's quite a few openings. There's a few regions here that we might want to make some modifications to. For example, we have a tiny little uh, edge here 
and that could cause some densification in the meshing of the model, but we'll leave this as is for now. And um, we'll go ahead and just select those, go back to model, and I'll convert those to openings. Okay, now I'll, I'll go ahead and display everything again using home, layer settings, turn all layers on. And we're going to isolate walls now. So the walls layer should be adapt walls lower modeling. Okay, these are our walls. And we'll go back to model. I'm going to use transform compound walls because some of the walls Actually, these walls are all straight lines. If, if, these, if this was one compound polygon, then we would use compound. But here we actually have walls that are in, in um, basically in, that, that are linear. So there are walls that actually qualify as columns that we may not transform. Like, for example, these. I'm actually going to select those individually and even this one individually and transform those to columns. And then I'll select the rest. Let me just do that. Deselect this, deselect that, and deselect that. And then we'll transform everything else to a wall. Okay, so if we go back and reset this to all layers on, I'll go back to visibility down here, this little teapot icon, and you can see we have our walls established here. Okay. Um, we do have a couple locations where we may actually choose to, to model these, these beams. Let's do that. This is a beam along this line. And then we have a beam um, here. There's a beam there. And this beam here. So we're going to ignore this stuff happening on the outside. And I'll just go to model and transform those, those beams. Okay, the last thing we're going to do is transform the slab. Now the slab, we're actually not going to transform. We're going to just simply uh, model the slab using tracing. So we have a polygon, I guess, here on the outside that we could transform. If I, if I use this option to transform, you can see that actually adds a slab on the perimeter. Um, if we had additional slabs that might be thicker, for example, in the core, if there was a thicker slab, we could actually overlay that inside and we would have to trace. So I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to select, instead of transform, I'm going to select the option to just model or create a slab. And I'll use my snap tools down on the bottom to make sure I'm snapping in the right location. But I'll just snap to the edge of um, that, the corner of that beam. And I'll go out here to this location. Um, now here I don't know exactly where this aligns, so I'll just snap here and then I'll go back and adjust that. Once I'm done placing the slab, I'll press um, enter or I'll press C to just close it, and then we can exit out of the command. And I want to move this point up to this location, but I need to have a reference point there. So um, I'll go back to home and I'll use the option to create a line. And I'll just create a line from here up to the um, edge of that slab, and I'll just use snap orthogonal to align that in the orthogonal y direction or the, the global y direction. And then I can take this particular slab and just move that point up to that location, something like that. And this will be a thicker slab region than everything else. So. We can overlap a slab without having the program double count the stiffness, without having the program double counting the self-weight. Slabs nested on other slabs essentially control the geometry of the location that the slab is placed in. So within this region, this slab geometry, and if even if there was an offset, would be taking uh, precedence. We can always uh, define an offset by... Um, if I press tab here, you can see I select that slab, and I'll go back to modify properties. And so this is eight inches. Um, if I go to location, I can create an offset vertically, 
positive is downward, negative is upward in terms of the input. So we'll make this slab here 12 inches. And I'll just go to 12. And we've converted this now to a file, uh, to a model. And so if we go back and check our visibility using that teapot tool, this is now the model that we have. We have supports below, openings, beams, slabs, drop panels. If I select my columns and walls and I want to copy those vertically, I can do that a couple of ways. I can uh, change the view using one of these predefined uh, viewing options. This, for example, is a front view. Um, and then I can just window select those components. If I want to modify them by copying them vertically, I would go to Modify under the Copy Move panel. I would say Vertically, and we're going to copy these up one time. Okay, and now we have something that looks like this. Okay, so that's um, how we would transform a CAD file into a model, a single level model in ADAPT. And I'll go back to a plan view. So if I go to home, I'll use this option for top view. And now I may want to turn the CAD file off. So to do that, it's under the visibility ribbon. Under group library, the CAD file is actually stored as a group. And I can see this CAD import one. I'll select it to be off. And now I'm left with only the uh, actual CAD representation or the structural model from the CAD representation. And there's a couple things here we may want to fix. I might, might, might want to move that um, beam to the location of this opening. Um, this beam is actually unsupported, so we're going to go ahead and just get rid of that beam. Uh, we'll leave this beam and this beam in place. Um, and then also, lastly, we're going to look at level assignment. So if we go to Model, Story Manager, you can see that we have three default level assignments, top plane, current, and bottom. And currently, this is at the current plane. And in later segments of this particular tutorial, we will discuss how to uh, create additional levels once it comes to generating a multi-story model from this particular floor. Thank you.